In today's video, I'm going to show you how to read a set of architectural construction drawings and you can immediately start implementing this on any project you're working on. So let's go! I've broken this down into four steps. So step one is actually if you're completely new to this, you'll be starting with the basics of reading construction drawings, which includes understanding page layout, page navigation, and what specific detail types architects and engineers could potentially use in a drawing set. I don't cover that in this video, but I do talk about this in my previous video on reading construction drawings, which I'll include a link to in the video description below. If you're just getting started, jump to that video first before moving on to this video. So for step two, and after you understand the basics of navigating construction drawings, I want you to start to focus on understanding one drawing discipline type, which is perfect for this video because we'll only be looking at the architectural drawings. And what I further mean by this is that before you try to become an expert on everything else, that being civil, structural, plumbing, electrical, mechanical, just try to focus on developing a strong understanding for one of these disciplines. You'll be ready to move on once you're able to explain to someone, visually or verbally, without a drawing detail in front of you, how that two-dimensional detail would look like in 3D or real life. Because essentially that is what you're doing. You're taking something on a 2D plane, digesting it in your mind, and then you're going to go build it on a 3D plane. I know this might sound silly or simple, but it will get your brain in the habit of visualizing what you're actually building before you have to go and actually build it. So the third step is expanding the knowledge of the single discipline to further understand how that discipline interacts and eventually coordinates with all the other drawing sets. Now I'll cover this specifically in a future video, but keep this in the back of your mind as we're going through these drawings. For instance, when we look at the reflected ceiling plan, is there enough space to accommodate the mechanical duct plumbing pipes, lighting, etc. These are some of the questions that you'll start asking when you start looking at all these drawing sets together. Now the design team should accommodate most of this information, but it's only going to help you as a builder to be aware and pay attention for this so you can raise the question earlier in the process if there potentially is an issue. So for someone who's never read a set of construction drawings, I'd explain digesting complex drawings the complete opposite of what you would expect when you read a book. With a book, you get page one, page two, page three, so on and so forth. The story's linear and when you get to the last page, you're done. When you're just starting out in construction, imagine a book that may have 500 pages. Nobody tells you where page one is. Page two isn't necessarily behind page one. The remainder of the pages are in no particular order. It's the job of the contractor or the builder to take each of these pages within the drawing set and put them in the correct order so that the building is built correctly. This essentially becomes the project schedule. But when you're brand new, this is likely going to be overwhelming because you don't have as much experience with how construction is sequenced. So I always like to reiterate the importance of visually witnessing the work taking place in person so you can relate this information back to a drawing set for someone who is new in the industry. On to the fourth and final step. So once you read all the drawings and you understand how all the different disciplines intertwine and coordinate with each other, your last focus is developing the skill set to see what is actually missing from the drawings and potentially should have been included. The most successful projects are those which people are forward planning months in advance by determining whether or not all the information is included and has been communicated efficiently to execute the scope. So we call this last step constructability, and if you do it early enough, you can potentially get delays and coordination conflicts out of the way so that you can maintain a healthy schedule throughout the project. So before we jump into a drawing set, I'll just note that almost every architect and engineer will have their own way of depicting information within the drawings, including where they put certain information, how much information they provide, what they show on the drawings for summarize in the specifications. So you can't just read the architectural drawings and ignore the rest of the drawing set or specifications. You have to read it all before you start asking questions because most likely it's probably covered somewhere else. If it's not, then you can issue an RFI or a request for information to the design team asking for this information. All right, enough chit chat. Let's jump into this architectural drawing set. So this drawing set actually has 28 different pages just within the architectural set. And before I look at any individual page, I'm just gonna flip through all the pages and see what we're working with. I'd actually start with a general series before to get a general understanding of what the project is. Is. But since we're just looking at the architectural drawings in this series, I'm going to skip over that part. So I'm going to do this by looking at the title block, which is on the right side of each page. Then bottom right of each title block, we'll find the sheet number and the sheet title. And again, we're doing this so we can better familiarize ourselves with how the architect organized this drawing set. A0.1, code study. This is your life safety plan and sometimes might have a sheet number starting with LS for life safety. The purpose of this drawing is to show fire separation and fire rated walls so that in the event of a fire, one 
bottom part of the building is containing the fire for a certain duration of time before the wall fails and it spreads to another part of the building. These codes and calculations are in place to ensure that people have enough time to safely exit the building. The code study shows the building occupancy versus the egress, which is your architect's calculations to prove that X amount of people inside the building can safely exit the building via X amount of doors and also takes into consideration the size of those doors to make sure that there's no choke point preventing people from exiting safely. A1.1 New Work Floor Plan. A1.2 New Work Penthouse Plan. A1.3 New Work Floor Plan. A2.1 Exterior Elevations. A2.2 Exterior Elevations Continued. A2.3 Axonometric Elevations. A2.4 Interior Renderings of the Lobby. A3.1 Door Schedule. A3.2 Finish Schedule and Plan. A3.3 Wall Types. A3.4 Storefront Types. A3.5 Curtain Wall Types. A4.1 Building Sections. A4.2 Wall Sections. A4.3 Wall Sections Continued. A4.4 Wall Sections Continued Again. A5.1 Enlarged Toilet Plans, Elevations, and Signage Details. A5.2 Signage Floor Plan. A5.3 Plan Details. A5.4 Plan Details Continued. A5.5 Plan Details Continued Again. A5.6 Section Details. A6.1 Interior Elevations. A6.2 Interior Elevations Continued. A6.3 Interior Elevations Continued. A6.4 Interior Elevations Continued. A7.1 Reflected Ceiling Plan. A9.1 Furniture Plan. A9.2 Enlarged Lab Plans. A9.3 Lab Wood Casework and Fume Hoods. A9.4 Millwork and Details. A9.5 Mock-Up Wall Plan Elevation and Section. And then finally AD0.1 Demolition Floor Plan. AD0.2 Demolition Section and Elevations. So we've gotten through the sheet numbers and sheet titles and now we have a general understanding of where things are located within this drawing set. So let's jump back to A1.1 the new work floor plan and start there. Now before we start looking at this floor plan let's take a note of everything else that's on this page. Not all drawings have this but I appreciate the fact that this architect included a key plan in the bottom right which is just another added element of reference to this building. Next I'm going to take a mental note of this compass which is telling me which way north is. This is beneficial because when I'm talking to someone on the phone it's easy for me to reference which side of the building I'm talking about or which side of the building they're talking about after familiarizing myself with the orientation of the building and how it's going to sit on the site. Next to the compass is a scale. So obviously the real building can't fit on this drawing page. So this scale is critical when building. It shows the relationship of the size of different components on the drawing versus what they would be in real life. This is essential when completing estimates as well. Moving to the right side of this page, we see a couple sections called general notes. Remember, you've got to read these notes in full as they're applicable to all of the drawings and the information is usually critical to what you're building. You can't just look at the details and build off of that. You have to read everything that's included in this drawing set. So let's actually read one of these notes and I'm going to look at note number three. Written information takes precedent over drawing lines. Bring conflicts between written information and drawing lines to the attention of the architect immediately. So why is this important? Well, if there is a conflict and you followed the wrong instruction by looking at the drawing first and not the written portion, that's a mistake. You have to read these general notes in full because they are applicable to the entire drawing set. So I'm going to quickly jump off this page and I'm going to go to AD 0.1 to show you another type of note. This is actually a keynote. The keynote differs from the general notes because you'll actually find a number associated on the detail that you're looking at that relates back to this keynote. Remember, the general notes are applicable to all the drawings. The keynotes will have specific callouts that you can find on the drawing. Let's take a look at an example. So looking at note number four, it says remove portion of wall for new opening, louver or window. Install new lintel per structural schedule. Next, see new work plans for size of openings. Carefully remove existing masonry so new masonry can be too thin. So we jump over from the keynote section to the actual detail or the drawing and I find this note in multiple locations. So I'm going to always remember in the back of my mind now that I've read this keynote what note number four means and what we need to do in the field. Before we jump back to the floor plan, this demolition plan also has a demolition key. This key or legend shows symbols and associated scope with that symbol. So if we look at the second one down, this is a symbol of a door that needs to be demoed and it says right next to it, door to be removed. Let's take a look at the plan. So I can see a series of doors and walls, if you notice, that need to be removed as part of this demolition. So on my way back to the floor plan, I stumbled across a schedule in the drawings. This isn't a project schedule with activity durations, but it's rather just a chart that the architect or engineer uses to communicate information efficiently. We'll take a look at this in just a minute. So back to A1.1, the new work floor plan. So even though this is showing the 
entire floor plan, this is still considered a detail. The detail number is A17 and the detail title is overall first floor plan. This is different than the sheet number and the sheet title. So the way I'd communicate navigating to this detail is I'd say, hey, can you go to A17 on A1.1, which you start with the detail number followed by the sheet number. So you'll also notice the numbers and letters surrounding this floor plan. These are grid lines and they're another point of reference that builders can utilize to ensure spatial distances match the intent of the drawings. On a large project, you could say, hey, at grid line B and 4.4, there's a plumbing pipe that shouldn't necessarily be there. So you can go to grid line B and 4.4, line up those lines and you know where they're talking about. Looking at 206, let's flip to A3.2. This finished schedule is actually going to show you the materials that are going to be installed in this specific room. So when I'm looking at 206, classroom, we can go across this list and see what is going to be installed on the floor, what kind of base you'll have, what goes on the walls, and what your ceiling type is. So just taking a look at 206, I see CPT1. And just from experience, I know CPT1 probably stands for carpet. And if we go up above, we can actually see this. Next, RST. What does that mean? If I keep going up above, we can see that this stands for rubber base, so on and so forth. This also tells us what is going to be on the walls, the ceiling, and much more detail. All we have to do is just keep navigating through this page to make the acronyms and all these little details make sense. They're usually outlined somewhere else if you don't know what it stands for right away. All right, jumping back to the floor plan. I'm going to stay in the same room, but now I'm going to look at the door, which they will all have their own number as well. What kind of door, frame, and hardware goes in this 206 opening? Well, again, that's just too much information to pack onto this one drawing detail. So we're going to have multiple pages, and I'm just going to keep doing this process for everything I come across. For 206, I'm going to go to the door and hardware schedule. Similar to the finish schedule, it's going to tell me what kind of door, what kind of frame, and what kind of hardware that door is going to receive. So how did I know that the finish schedule and the door schedule existed? Well, aside from knowing that these come in pretty much every architectural set for a project of this size, we went through the drawing sheets and the titles at the very beginning, which allows me to quickly jump and navigate to these drawings to understand what we're building. So again, if you're just starting off, don't be overwhelmed. Just keep going through the drawing pages, flip back and forth, read all your drawing titles, all your sheets, all your general notes before you start jumping into these details to give you a better understanding of where everything is located. The faster you understand where everything's located, the sooner you'll be able to digest these drawings and actually understand what you're building. So I found door 206 on the schedule, and then I'm just going to start reading across this list. The nominal size of this door is three foot wide, seven foot tall, and one and three quarters inch thick. The door type is F. Well, let's look on this drawing sheet and see if it's listed somewhere. Okay, I found it. So F looks just like a standard door with no glass in it. Now that we're looking at this detail, let's take a look next to it at FG, which means the door actually has glass in it. So I'm going to jump back to the door schedule. I can see now that five doors actually have glass in them because they're listed FG, while the other 41 doors just have the standard F detail. Wait, what about these four doors that don't have anything listed? Well, again, we just need to keep reading. It looks like these three doors have cased openings and one is actually listed as a floor hatch. So again, nothing is gonna be perfectly laid out. You just have to keep reading until all the notes make sense. Okay, running across the rest of this list, we look at the top header, which identifies the door, which we just covered. And then we can look at the frame, the door label fire rating, the hardware set, and other remarks. So again, we have to pay attention to all these details to make sure that the door we're installing, the frame we're installing, and the hardware set that we're installing match the drawings. So the hardware set, may be called out somewhere on this page. It may be called out in the specifications. We just have to go digging for it. Okay, let's go back to our floor plan. We're back on the floor plan and we're zoomed in on a section of the drawing where we can see K1, K2, X1, SF10, and SF12. Again, a bunch of letters and numbers that are going to be overwhelming if this is the first time you're looking at a drawing set. There isn't going to be enough room on this floor plan to explain everything. So similar to the two previous examples, we're going to have to go find this information elsewhere in the drawing set. So to say Save some time in this video, let's assume that you and I both read all the drawings and we know where this exists. And if you recall, there was a wall type drawing at the beginning of this video. Let's jump to that sheet. All right, we're on sheet A3.3, wall types. I'm going to look for the K1 and the K2 on this page, which I found. K1 is a 3 and 5 eighths inch metal stud with gypsum board on each side, total thickness 4 and 7 eighths inch. K2, 6 inch metal stud with gypsum board on each side, total thickness 7 
seven and a quarter inch. So looking at the visual aspect of this K1 and K2 wall, we see that this wall goes all the way to the underside of the deck, which we would consider a full height wall. We see that there are metal studs, we see the sound insulation, the gypsum wall board on each side, and also a note that says base type reference the finish schedule. So again, more information that leads us elsewhere in this drawing set. What this detail doesn't show and will not show is the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection piping that would be above the ceiling and potentially go through this wall. We'd have to reference the other drawing disciplines to understand this information. And also, if this is a fire rated wall, there's certain requirements to caulk and close up these penetrations when duct and piping goes through these walls. So if I look elsewhere on this page, I see the X1 wall type called out that I was referencing earlier, as well as some exterior wall types that we've not yet come across on the floor plan. So I'm mentioning this because if you're going through these drawings, you can continue to take mental notes of where these drawing details exist so you can quickly navigate back to them in the future. All right, we're heading back to our floor plan. Okay, on the floor plan, the last thing I'll note before we start jumping around through these pages is the dimensions that are called out. Now, the architect specifically put these dimensions on these pages because they are to be followed. So you can see quite a few of them, and these are to be followed by the builder or the contractor when they're installing stuff in the field. This area of the drawing I'm looking at has three detail types. This symbol indicates a section cut. It's slicing through a particular section of the building, and the arrow indicates which way you'll be looking at that detail. So if I clicked on this, it would take me to sheet A4.1, and I'd look for detail E14 on that page to see what this section cut would look like. This symbol indicates a plan view detail of the area it's circled. Now this circle can be larger than what you see here, or smaller depending on the level of detail that the architect is trying to show. If I were to click on this, it would take me to sheet A5.5, and then I would look for detail E18 on that page to see what this plan view detail would look like. The last detail type in this area Area is an elevation view detail. So again, clicking on this would take me to sheet A6.3. But if you notice, there's four details on this. Well, each one has a corresponding elevation. So if I wanted to look at the north wall, I'd look for detail 16 on A6.3. So for the rest of the drawing set, you're going to be repeating this process. Start with the drawing sheets and elevations that are zoomed out, such as large floor plans, reflected ceiling plans, or broad elevation plans. Then click or flip through your digital or hard copy set using those sections enlarge plan and enlarge elevation details we just looked at to see every aspect of the project. The further you go in, the greater amount of detail that is used to depict that portion of construction. So for example, I'm going to flip and go to detail E14 on A4.1. I see another enlarged section, so I'm going to go to A14 on A4.2. This shows me that this wall is built with CMU, insulation, brick, a precast sill, and embedded steel lintel, which were all existing. But there is a new SF3, which looks like a new window, but more likely storefront based on the abbreviation SF. Well, that's a good amount of information on this detail, but let's go to that final level of detail E15 on A3.1. Awesome. This shows quite a bit of information of how the window actually gets installed. There's a precast sill, aluminum storefront with sealant, wood blocking, and a solid surface sill, where this scope could be split between four different companies. Now remember, this is just one portion of the building, but every detail needs to be considered for core coordination of scope and what companies are responsible for what activities, unless you're self-performing everything. Okay, so let's back up one drawing. I want to look at the head of this window and see what's going on here. Okay, I flipped to G15 on A3.1. Same level of detail on top of the storefront. I now know a lot of information about the storefront detail and the scope of work on this aspect of the project. I'm going to go all the way back out to A1.1 now, our new work floor plan where we started. Now you can see all these SF3s, which would have the same detail that we just looked at. Again, this is how you start to piece together that book on how this project is getting built. The next thing is clicking all the details and completing the same process for all these pages. Then you move on to another drawing discipline and take all the details that you figure out from those drawing disciplines and coordinate them together. You take the multiple disciplines and then you start to sequence the work. What is page one? What is page two? What is page three? You can't paint your walls until your walls are taped and finished. You can't tape and finish until you install drywall. You you can't install drywall until you've installed your wood or cold form metal framing. Okay, you get the point. So that's it. I want to thank you for watching this whole video. And I do have a test for those of you who are interested. Replay this video back starting at the four minute and 35 second mark, which is when I first start talking about the drawing sheet numbers and sheet titles in this drawing set. I'll put a timestamp in the description area below. After I say each sheet number, but before I say each sheet name, are you able to say the sheet name from memory without looking? Keep flipping through the time 
timestamps in the description below until you can commit the sheet names to memory. This is just practice for what you'll be doing in the real world on a job. You don't need to memorize every single detail right away. Flipping through and memorizing the sheet names and the sheet numbers will train you on how to be better at finding details faster. Leave me a comment below letting me know how many you got. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I'll be going more in depth about coordinating architectural drawings with other drawing disciplines in future videos. So as always, bye, bye for now. now.